I wrote a book um, called Infallible, and I don't talk about my writings a lot, but Infallible is about a group of African American men, right? Right on the eve of Hurricane Katrina. And it's about their lives before Katrina. Well, Katrina is not even the focus of the story. It's just a, a, a just a glimpse into what it was like in New Orleans before Katrina. And it, it tells the story of, of, of a group of guys that got together every week for a Madden tournament, Madden, John Madden football tournament. And they got together at a gentleman's house named Uncle Glenn. They called him Uncle Glenn. He was only about 10 years older than him. But they called him Uncle Glenn. Because he was the elder, you know, of the group. And it, 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 it takes you through untreated mental health issues. Without even realizing what you're witnessing is untreated mental health issues but it also takes you inside of how these guys created their own form of mental health and that was uncle glenn and how they turned to him he you know accidentally inadvertently became their therapist without them even knowing he was a therapist and without him even realizing he was operating in that role of keeping all of these guys with all of these untreated issues. And, and that's really what I should have named the book. Untreated shit. Because so much of what. Yeah, and I put it in the form of a novel. Right. Just so you can see the stories. Because you know Infallible is really as close as a, as a, a memoir of my life. You know I wrote it for my sons actually. You know, just to show them what fucking up looks like and how to get your life on track, just in case I don't live to see them in their 30s. You know, I wanted to show them how I managed in my late 20s, 30s to, you know, recover from a derailment, a mental derailment. And so, you know, that's often the case um, in our communities as it relates to mental health is that we'll turn to groups. We'll turn to these, these tribes to try to manage it and to process it. We don't always go to therapists. We'll go to our, my, my homeboy, you know, uh, for African-American men. Sometimes there's this guy like uncle Glenn and is, you know, for us, it was a John Madden tournament, but sometimes it's fishing. Sometimes it's hunting. Sometimes it's football. You know, that brings these small pockets of men together where they can sit down and just deal with untreated shit, you know. And calling it infallible was really a play off the word because it's really dealing with, you know, broken, you know, how untreated issues in African-American men leads to failed relationships. You know, how you get failed relationships. And I, I put the, you know, the African-American men is the focus of it. But, you know, white brothers go through the same thing. They have reached out to me who have read the book and said, you know, this this applies to every race of men. There is. We'll form these pockets. And in these pockets is where we get help. And, you know, Hurricane Katrina took that group from me because of the disbursement you know of Hurricane Katrina and I no longer had that Uncle Glenn that I connected with every Thursday and just talk about things uh, somebody to tell you nah bro you ass wrong for that you know nah that shit don't make no sense somebody or just somebody say what the fuck wrong with you <laughs> what's going on with you we don't get asked that question outside of these groups. And for most men, you know, if they dare to be honest, nobody ever comes up to you and asks you, hey, man, how you feeling? How you doing? You know, and really, 
I'm talking about ask you this question and it really concern like ask you how you're feeling and then shut the fuck up and listen to you. When was the last time somebody asked you that? Hey man, you how you holding up? How you doing? How you feeling? We don't. We assume that they're okay. We see them functioning and we we you know form in our minds because we see somebody functioning that they are actually functional, you know, but you can be functionally dysfunctional. You, you know, sort of like a, a finger that's broken and just heals broken or a package that arrives to your house from Amazon, but everything in it is broken. And so many of us, African-American men, were broken in the box, you know, and nobody wants to talk about this shit, especially African-American men from New Orleans. That's a whole different you know, when you meet guys from New Orleans, these are a lot of men that are broken in the box. You're seeing them, but there's so much shit that happened from August 2005 until now that they're functionally dysfunctional, right? They're just getting through this shit. And now some of us are hitting 45, 47, 48, 42, 51, 55, 60, and no one is still asking to say, man, how you doing? You know, a lot of us have lost our little groups, our little hubs, our little tribes. Some of us lost our tribes to, you know, COVID-19. Some of us lost our tribes through natural causes, you know, because people from New Orleans, men my age, we long since graduated from dumb shit. We just don't do dumb shit. When you see all of this crime that's going on in the city. Those are Katrina babies. Those are the kids that no one asks those kids how they're feeling or how they're doing. But when they get to our age, no one, no one really gives a fuck. They just assume because, you know, we have a high tolerance for pain that we no longer feel. Now nah, we feel. We feel. So if you have a, you have a man in your life, you know, particularly an African-American man. Go up to them. Even if you are one. It could be your brother. It could be anybody. And ask them. Hey, bro. How you doing, man? And I want you to listen to what he says. When you ask him, how are you doing? Because the first response is going to be, man, I'm all right, man. I'm cool. I'm chilling. No, no bro. How are you feeling, bro? How do you feel? Shut up and listen. Because there's something that I want you to listen for. If you ask him how he's feeling. And the word tired comes up at any point. In that conversation. You're dealing with somebody that's having a mental health crisis. And it sounds sort of like, man, I'm just, you know, I'm maintaining, man, but I'm just tired. bro. I'm just, I'm just tired. And if you start to hear the word tired repeatedly, you have a situation on your hands that you need to pay attention to because that individual needs some help. And that's what I wanted to share with you.